Can I now introduce Millie Ingram uh, from the Wyanga Local Elders Group, uh, the Wiradjuri people. Oh, thanks, Don, and thanks for inviting me up here to uh, say a few words. My name's Millie Ingram, and uh, I represent the Wyanga Aboriginal Elders uh, Group that are here in Redford, just about uh, 100 yards away from here. And uh, I would like to commend Generation One for the fab fabulous work that we uh, that they are doing. Um, I would like to see uh, be looking at it in a 10 years' time to make sure that it is sustainable that the employment is there and that there'll be career opportunities so we can have Aboriginal CEOs and Aboriginal directors uh, that they can work their way up in promotional opportunities. In New South Wales, I think they're afraid of New South Wales careers because um, they never get promoted. Where they go in, that's where they stay. And I think that's what I'd like to see Generation, um, generation One do with the job opportunities that they get for people, that there's a career path for them that they can be promoted. Um, we have some good properties around here in Redford. This is, um, this is one of them. We have our Wyanga property uh, and we have the old Black Theatre site and we have another one in Abercrombie Street and of course we have the block which will be developed and it's going to be a really, really good program. But I want to remind you, I'm so glad that Generation One has got corporate Australia behind them and the private sector because the government of this country for decades and generations have done absolutely nothing for the Aboriginal people of this country unless they were dragged screaming and uh, to, to the table for funding. And they, if you don't know it, there's a trend lately to mainstream and get everybody back in. And mainstreaming is just another word for assimilation. So we're taking a gigantic step backwards into the 1940s and 1950s. I've been here in Redfern. I first came here in 1958, so I have a, a long relationship with Redfern. I'm a Radju person from New South Wales, and I've always respected and acknowledged the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. But I've been here so long that I feel a part of it as well. Sydney was one place we could all come to to get employment because there was nothing in the country areas, unless you were a servant, a housemaid, or a seasonal worker. Other than that, you didn't get work. So that's why we all came to Sydney. And in Redfern was where our family and our people come to, the same as the Italians went to Leichhardt and the Greeks went to Maple and the New Zealanders went to Bondi and the South Africans went to St Ives. So that's, <laughs> it's, it's all around. Uh, so we were here and we were here a long time before the rest of them. And what's been happening with Redfern too is becoming gentrified. I've had fights with the, uh, with the system to say um, that what they did, the, the gentrification, they come in and over the last two decades, properties were starting, um, they were cheaper because Paddington and Balmain was too expensive. So they bought in here cheap and then they wanted all the blacks out so their property values would go up. And I've told them this in public forums that that's all they came in for, for their property values. But we stayed and we fought and remember that um, this building was because Eddie Marbo got up and spoke and fought for native title for his land. And that was down here, come down to Australia. So the ILC bought this. It is Aboriginal property, owned by, not given to us by the government out of the goodness of their heart, but fought for for people, for people like Eddie Marbo and uh, a whole lot of generations and decades of people. But we still have problems with, um, with education. Uh, I think if we don't take a holistic approach, and I have been talking to the Chancellor of Sydney University and of Sydney University of New South Wales, that they've got to get in there and start teaching the teachers and all the system Aboriginal studies, because our kids will not survive in the education system unless they have proper people in there teaching them and educating them. And if they don't have the, the, the training and understanding of Aboriginal studies, we will just have people who will not have the heart or the goodwill to train our, to educate our kids. Racism is alive and well. Tamanu Tahu made a, a, a gesture on principles and now it brought every racist in the country out. And we have to unite against racism and we have to have a united national campaign against racism. So if you listen to Talkback Radio, read the blogs. I mean, I, didn't, I don't think that 
decent human beings think like that. They don't. And it's up to our wonderful non-Aboriginal white friends that are always behind us. Let us get together and get a campaign to wipe out racism because our kids will still suffer if we don't do something about it. We have to look at employment uh, on a broader scale. I work with aged people and people over 40 can't get jobs. I've got a sister here who's got Harvard degrees, degrees from City University and Harvard degrees, and she can't get a job. You know why? Because they expect you to be down there at the little low level um, uh, positions that they have. And I notice in New South Wales, nearly all the jobs, they've always got white bosses. I have trouble getting people in the bureaucracy to come out and meet with us because they have to get permission for their bosses and they don't see the value and you keep going out to the Aboriginal community all the time. And until we get more Aboriginal people in these top jobs and remove some of the white folks from accountability, look at the home, look at the schools and, at, and approach it on a broader scale like that, there's going to be gaps and a lot of them are going to fall through those gaps and um, we have to think the, the big picture as well. I don't mean to put a damper on because I think what Generation One is doing is absolutely wonderful. Keep up the good work, but look at the whole big picture and let's start looking at promotional opportunities and not see, because I'll be looking at it, I hope I'm still here in five years time, to see how many people win in these jobs and whether they're still there in five years time. Because people I've seen went into jobs five and 10 years ago are still there. So feel good about it and make sure that we do a better job. And in five years time we come back we can all pat ourselves on the back and say, yes, we did it. And let's say in 10 years' time that we have wiped out racism. If we can't wipe out racism, let's wipe out the racists. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.